if we were doing a flap and it was edentulous like this, then normally I would do just a midline release and then crestal as long as it's in keratinized tissue all the way back to the hamular notch. Then I would feel for the zygomatic buttress. So then you want to go about 10 millimeters behind that and make a vertical release. And then as you start reflecting the flap, you take a piece of gauze, so a moist piece of gauze, put it under the flap, put one finger on each side of the zygomatic buttress like this. And then you will push with very, very heavy pressure. And that will start to elevate the flap. And you're gonna elevate the tissue all the way until you drop into the zygomatic notch, which is way up here. What I'm looking for is I'll follow the buttress up until it starts to become the zygomatic arch. You know, I'm going to basically reflect as much as I need to reflect so I can see this. I want to see the, the base of this. And if I don't see this and I've reflected as much as I need to see, I'm not going to go dig around and look for it. I'll always put the pterygoid in first. That way, if I have a very strong pterygoid, I know I could come maybe a little bit more anterior. And the more anterior I come, I know I'm safer away from the orbit. What I'm looking at is usually about the second premolar area on average for the exit point. If you go down, say you go too low. If you go too low and I drill in on this model, I believe I should see how I popped into the sinus. And usually, if that is in real life, the bones is usually very, very thin and you'll pop into the sinus very fast. So if you say you went into the sinus, then just go up now a bit more vertical. And so now say I could drill this now here. Okay, so all I'm using this first drill for is to make a mark. Okay, so say we want to come in at about the second premolar. Now, you see how this allows me control. This isn't sliding all over the place. So, we'll prepare the channel. And now, how deep I want to get this into the bone is this is how much of the implant will be out of the bone. You can see I'm starting to get this channel here. And so this channel will now guide all of the other drills. I can go in with this next drill and see this essentially will guide me. You can take something like this measuring device and place it on top of the zygoma. And that will tell you how thick you are in the zygoma. So Jack will call it the meat. So how much meat of the bone that you have. You can see this always goes into the same slot. And so now I drill. And as I'm drilling, I'm stabilizing this always in this channel. You could even put pressure on this shaft if you want. And if I keep drilling, so this is very dense, almost just like a real zygoma would be. And so see how it's just starting to pop out here. So I, I would drill in the mouth until I felt that pop through. Okay, usually what I would do next is take this measuring device, place this in here, and you can see how it pops through. So you should feel that on the skin and you'll, you'll be able to put your uh, finger on the cheek and you can feel this. Normally in the mouth, we'll just drill up to the number two drill. So now we'll just drill, you see it gets through very quick. And now because these models are very dense and brittle models, we'll go in with the number three drill. Every drill always will fit the same channel. I, I, it'll always stay very stable. So all I have to do is push against the bone. So I'll come up, it'll go through. Okay, 
we take our measuring device, go in here. It has a little hook, which will hook onto the bone. Now you're measuring onto the ridge. So if we go one, two, three lines, that's 45. And then you'll subtract two and a half millimeters uh, because uh, prosthetics to account for the abutment. So now anything that goes in here, again, the channel is all the same. So all I have to do is make sure that I'm hugging the bone and everything will follow the same channel because everything's been the same diameter. So as I place this, you know, for any of the implants, you can go uh, in and out, in and out. And so I would just go out some and then in some. If I was doing this in the mouth, I would just go in, out, in, out to allow the bone to expand. So now I see I have a pretty good amount of room. So I'll move about an average of about six millimeters or so. And now I can follow the same direction. And now I can make a purchase point. Okay, so normally if you're doing a quad, the second implant, the more anterior implant, will come out on average about the lateral incisor on average. So all I'm trying to do is just make a little bit of a mark just so I can see which direction I'm going. So again, I want to deepen this into the bone to have less of this exposed. Now I could take this round diamond up here and usually in real life, you'll be into the sinus very quickly here. So now you can see I'd be palpating the eye. I'm trying to stay relatively parallel to the implant. Okay. And now I would drill. So now I can go through. I can feel it pop through. The next thing I would do is also take my measuring device, place and feel, and usually it will be coming out you know, lateral to the eye. But for this one, we'll go to drill number three. Pop through. So we'd want to go with a uh, 52.5. Place this in, hold this against the, just make sure that this shaft is against the channel. And just using your finger to make sure that it's very tight. And then once it gets very tight, now you can loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen. You can see the distance between the apices. So I'm not crossing swords, you know, I'm not hitting each other.